All right, so we have Lauren, our amazing model, and then we also have Lindsay, the makeup artist. So what we are doing is we are going to um, kind of set up a situation for when we are walking in a room and shooting a bride getting ready. So if the we makeup artist- we want to shoot the shoes first or we want to shoot her first? Yeah, we can do whatever you want. Do you want to start with the shoes? I think we should start with the shoes, okay. kind of go in order, if that's cool, and then we'll switch to the bride, getting her makeup touched up and kind of show you how we photograph that. Yeah. And do we have shoes? I heard we did. Can, yes. we, can we take your shoes off of your feet and photograph them? Maybe a shoe model for us. Sweet. There's the shot. Sweet. Okay. Cool. So you want to start off with that then? Yes. All right. So we have these awesome shoes. So again, what we're looking for is we're looking for great window light. And what do you know? We have some really nice light pouring through here. So. What we're going to do is you want to talk through what you're thinking, maybe? Yes. And let me uh, get the macro out okay. while we're chatting. So he's grabbing the 100 millimeter macro. And what's great about that is you can get in really tight on your subjects, whatever you're shooting. In this case, it's shoes. You can get in really tight on that. And so we're going to put that on. And we'll show you what it looks like. So obviously, anytime we walk in any situation, the most important thing is being cool, you know, like when we're walking in, like you saw the bride came out, I was like, yeah, I walked over to the room, I was like, dude, I want, I want that suit, like, I want to be you right now, that's how good you look, you know, we're just making them feel like they are the most important thing happening in the room, I did that on purpose to you, see, it works, see, he's even smiling right now, now he knows the yeah. trick, he's like, dang it, now, we have our groom yeah. over there in the corner, our groom's over there in the corner, <laughs> so it's very, very important to just be casual and cool, I think, especially in the beginning of the day. And we tell our clients, there'll be a time when we may need to rush a little more. Okay, that's great. Do this. All right, we're running out of time. Let's, you know, there's a time to be rushed, but definitely not the first part of the day. So we want to come in, be cool, be casual, um, take as much time as we can, uh, or make it feel like we're, you know, running the day real slow and smooth. Uh, so we'd walk in like this, and we'd say hi to the bride. How's it going? We're so excited. You look amazing. Your dress is beautiful. Oh my gosh, you're awesome. And then, hey, while you're getting your makeup on or getting started with that, can we grab your shoes and dress and take some photos? So in this case, she's already wearing a dress, so we're not going to hang it up on the wall right now. <laughs> uh, that would be totally inappropriate. So instead, what we're going to do is take a quick photograph of her shoes and just show you how we would use this window light and use this fill light. So what we're going to have, do, have the crew do is actually turn these two lights off really fast because they're really bad fill lights for us at the moment. They look good on me, but they don't look so good on our shoes. So if that's cool, are you guys gonna freak out if you turn those off? Great. Yeah, both of them, if that, would, that would be awesome. And then if the cam one of the camera guys can actually film this, you can actually see, like, if I start moving this chair closer and closer to the window, you can start seeing, even with my eye, the highlights very bright on this side, very dark on this side. But the further I move that away from the window, all of a sudden the shadows start opening up more and more and more, and we have more, uh, less shadow and less highlight on the other side. Remember, in really close, that light gets dark quickly. Move it away further, and it's a much softer fall off. And I'm actually going to have Jody grab this little white pillow. We happen to have one sitting over here. Do you want to use the reflector or just show the pillow? Yeah, that's fine. So she can also use this, ref this pillow. If you guys can come a tad bit closer, maybe. But mm -hmm. we so can, can use this that. as a nice little fill light and add some dimension to this side of this. Can you see that? So see how simple I got to be. You can see how simple that is just by putting that in there. It adds some really nice adds texture. a nice light. And this is a pillow. Nothing special about it. Yeah, so awesome. So I think that looks great, adding that little bit of extra fill. So all I'm going to do, pop up my Expo disc. And I'm not sure what that is. Secret something. <laughs> Note from my wife, probably. Take uh, so I'm going to pull out my Expo disc, stick it over the front of my lens. Anybody remember what my shutter speeds should be? I've got a 100 mil lens on. What's the slowest it should be? Slowest it should be. 1 one hundredth. So 1 over focal length. At the length. lowest. The lowest 1 one hundredth. So but you want to go higher. At least 1 one hundredth. So I'm at 1 two hundredth right now, just to be safe. We're also in a very um, dark area, so we probably need to be fairly wide open. But remember, if we're in really close with the macro lens, the closer you get to something more out of focus, everything else around it gets. And I want a little bit of depth in the shoes. I don't want them to be you know, one little spot in focus and everything completely blown out. 
or out of focus. So I'm actually going to go to F4, believe it or not. So we're going to go to F4. And this is also, the cool thing about this new L lens is it's an image stabilizer lens. So instead of that one over focal length, we can now cut that by four stops. So instead of one one hundredth of a second, I can go down to one fifteenth of a second and get the same steadiness of a shot with this lens. So now the most, next most critical thing is when I'm getting the exposure, I have to make sure that the expo disc is at the same distance to the window as these shoes are. Otherwise, because notice the exposure here and the exposure here are very different. Super dark, super bright. So we have to make sure that when I get that exposure of this light, it's at the same distance. So I'm going to put it right here. Now I'm looking through on this camera. You have to look at the back of the camera to see the, um, the, the light meter or the, the in-camera meter. So right now it says I'm two-thirds overexposed at ISO 800 f4 two hundredth of a second. So I'm going to slow my shutter speed down, or sorry, speed it up to get it to zero. And now I'm at zero at 2 50th of a second ISO 800 f4. Now I just take a picture. So he has a perfect exposure. Yep, I got so a perfect now because exposure. he has that exposure, he can grab the shot to give it that 18% gray that the camera needs. So I snap a quick photo. And as you can see, I've got that down the middle exposure. I don't know if the camera can see that or not. Awesome, 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 awesome. And now on this camera, I can actually set that white balance by pressing a couple of buttons here. And remember, every camera is different, so it's going to be a different process for you. So now I have that color set, so this color should come out perfectly. And now I've got this beautiful angle. Jody's going to add that little fill light on the side. I'm going to come around to this side, line up my little shot here. And you can come a scotch close from my view. I like the word scotch. So now we're going to focus in on our little shoes here, which look gorgeous. Take an image. And did it, is it coming up on the screen? It should be. Bingo. And now we've got this beautiful shot. And notice, even at f4, that background's way out of focus. See that? But it looks absolutely fantastic. The only thing I'm noticing is Jody's leg is in my shot. So we're going to move her leg out of the way and take <laughs> another one. And actually, I'm going to slide these forward a little bit because they're kind of low profile shoes and see if I can get a little more, see the top of them just a little bit more. Perfect. All right, so we're going to snap another one here. Super cool. I love the click of this camera. It sounds so like intense. Awesome. Perfect. And remember, you're seeing the JPEGs. So these are, once we kind of add a little bit of the contrast and color bump them a little bit, these are going to look absolutely fantastic. So that's exactly how we shoot the shoes. Now, every time we're shooting details, I know that Jody's going to put together an album. So I want to get a horizontal and a vertical of everything. So I would shoot vertical, horizontal, and then I'd be done. How many shots do you need of shoes? <laughs> Not that many. So we take five, six, seven, eight shots, make sure they're in focus. And I zoom in really quick and go, yep, these are super clearly in focus. We're done. Zach, awesome. do you want to take a shot without the pillow? And let's see the difference yeah. that. Yeah, she'll pull the pillow out. We'll take a quick shot without it so you can sort of see the difference with the fill light. And hang on, this takes a second to register. There we go. Super cool. We need to shoot the bride. Yep. All right. So we're going to bring our rock star bride and give her her shoes back. There you go, my dear. So now you can see that shot. And if downstairs they scroll between them, you can really see the difference with that little pillow fill light. But I don't know if they'll do that for us. Yes. Ooh, beautiful. I loved with the fill light much better. All right, so Lauren, awesome. let's have you sit here. And then let's bring in Lindsay. Lindsay, do you want a chair? So what um, are you going to shoot with the 50, or what do you want? I usually stand, so Perfect. I'm no. All right, so, oh. so essentially we're doing the exact same thing that we did with the shoes, except I'm not going to be adding a fill light. I don't want to be all up in um, my bride's face and have it be a big production. I just want to capture what's going on. So oftentimes, sometimes when I arrive, the bride hasn't gotten her, um, her makeup shot yet. So I know this is where I want to set her. So I'll even go here and do everything that I need to do even before she gets here. So. I'm putting my expo disc pointing towards the light, and I'm actually one third brighter than what I want to be. So right now I'm at ISO 400. I'm at 
two eight f two eight, and then two fiftieth one two fiftieth of a second. And this lens is a twenty four to seventy millimeter. So to, in order to prevent camera shake, I don't want to go any below seventy millimeters. So I'm going to adjust my shutter speed. So I get my meter right down the line, and it's looking it's at two fifty. Oh, I think she looks awesome right there. <laughs> I know, just sitting there. It's too easy. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've taken. Oh, and you can see that too. Right, so, so here I'm looking at my histogram and I can see I've got my line right up in the middle so I know my exposure is great. So I'm just going to go in my menu. I'm going to apply the custom white balance. And so now the white balance should be amazing. And let's move her a tad bit closer to the window, I think. All right, so now we're moving her closer. So what do I need to do because I'm moving her closer? What's going to change? That's good right there. Yep. Sorry. So... Now I'm just going to double check this. I'm going to go where it faces, and I'm a little bit brighter, so I'm actually going to slow down my shutter speed. Right down the line is 1 400th of a second now. So I'm going to apply that in camera, my custom white balance. So I'm going to take a shot and see what this looks like. Do you want me to be in there let or me not take yet? a quick shot of her, and then we'll let you do your magic. So. And then if you guys can just watch standing in our in the light right there. Sorry. All right, so you can see it's super dark. So I spin my shutter speed up. And I'm looking at my histogram, and it's still really dark because we're so close to the window. We have a brightness. We have a highlight area and our shadow area. So all we're doing is we're just tweaking this now and I actually might move her back to where we were. That's awesome right there if she turns into the light. Looks great. So now I'm looking at my histogram and I love it and you can see it come up. And so you can see now how look at your eyes look amazing. They look so good. So now like I have my exposure of where I want it. So now that we're all set we're just going to start shooting. So we'll have Lindsay, our makeup artist, come in. Yeah, so it's great if your legs are kind of this way, but you turn your face back into the light a little bit and have her come around. Yeah, awesome. And so as I'm shooting, I'm trying to be careful of what I'm putting in the frame because we kind of have the leg of the piano. We have that purple couch. So I'm just trying to be aware of what we're seeing. So often I just kind of want to crop in really close. Often what I love to do and Lindsay, what you were doing was perfect. So hold that when you're ready to do your makeup stuff. And I love putting the makeup artist. So check out that. Sh oh, Lauren, your eyes are beautiful. Lauren, look down with your eyes. Yes. OK. So right there you can see. And I love, I love putting the makeup artist in the frame a little bit because it adds just that extra layer. And you can see right in camera how that image looks. We'll wait for it. Wait for it. And see how you have that depth now? And then the next shot that you'll see is I had Lauren look down with her eyes. And then it just, and it looks really cool. And so now I want her to look Hot down day. even more. And so what I'll tell the bride, sometimes when I tell them to look down, they kind of look down halfway. So I'll say, look down at your nose. And so then you can really see their eyelashes. So chin up a little bit. And so let's say Lauren was kind of an awkward bride and I'd be like, all right, nice face, nice face, you know, and then she starts laughing, and I'll be like, Lauren, you're getting married, and then chin up a little bit, love it, and look towards the window a little bit, yes, love, and then what I'll do too is like, okay, I've gotten those really tight shots, so now what I want to do is I just kind of want to show like a silhouette can be really cool of what's going on here. And this Super is actually cool. really cool because we've got the cameraman in here too. So you can see the shot coming up here. Stunning. You can see the silhouette of the story of what's going on. And, and like Lauren, I love her hair. It's like the coolest hair ever. So then it's just like once you know you have the shot. That's gorgeous. Oh then you can just like shoot around. And and you get, can see exposure wise too. Let me just interject. Because exposure wise, especially if you backlit a bride like that and you want to hop in and get the shot, something like this, very difficult to do to figure out Where's the correct exposure if you're trying to do this other than the way that we did it? Like you pull back and you go, well, what's the exposure? Should I expose here or there? If you did it here, it'd be washed out. But now we have this beautiful definition. And we're looking at raw images. 
Anybody that uses Lightroom and shoots RAW realizes, you, you look at the pictures in the back of your camera, they have this beautiful sharpness and contrast. You put them in Lightroom and they go, and they die somehow. What happens? We're shooting RAW as well, and they're putting the RAW images right up on the screen, and you notice they kind of go, oh. What happens is RAW flattens itself out, and it assumes you're going to add that contrast or sharpness back. So these are completely flattened images, and you can see how gorgeous they look like this. This is absolutely fantastic. So very, very exciting. And so I set all of my settings once, so now I'm not having to change in guesswork. So just for fun, I'm going to switch this to an uh, uh, AV, which is an auto mode. Pull back and do the silhouette again. <laughs> and I'm see gonna, what happens. And so now when we let the camera think on its own, you'll see it's like Was so it good or bad? That out. Oh. Watch, it's like, like perfect. crap, it looks We're awesome. Like, these cameras are getting better. <laughs> no, it, it looks pretty crappy. So, so see now the it's difference. way over silhouette. And maybe that's what you liked, but I'm not so excited about seeing you know, this uh, um, tent in the background or the kids' playground. I like the bright, detail, mm -hmm. wash, you know, windows kind of washed out shot. Yeah. So something to be careful about this lens is because it goes to 24 millimeter, it can shoot really wide. And the last thing that I want to do is make our bride's face look warped. So I'm actually going to take a shot. And then we got to do a portrait. OK, great. So you can do your makeup goodness. And so I'm at 24, and I'm shoot. And what it does is it kind of makes her face not as flattering as Wait for it. Mm, not See, it's good. a little bit warped, and we want the more natural, more compressed. You know, we want to flatter our eyes. <laughs> so let's have you turn your face over. Yeah, that's great. So then, what I, what you can do is you can zoom in and then step back if you still want to get really tight. Pause. Wait so switch, it. and we'll do a shot of the bride getting her dress made up. Awesome, that's exactly what we want right there. And so also as I'm shooting like the bride, I'm looking for little details like, you know, she'll have a ring on, so I'll shoot the ring on her hand. Oftentimes they've got a manicure or a pedicure, so I'll shoot these little vignette details of what's going on and then also pull back like I did. Awesome, so what we're gonna do now, we're actually gonna do a little mock the bride getting her dress on. She's not going to take it off and put it back on. We're just going to have her stand up really quick if she doesn't mind. Thank you, my dear. We'll take this chair and just slide it right back there if Jody could do that. And a lot of times we'll totally stage this. So what I think would be amazing, yeah, our model is rock star. She looks great at anything. So I think if we actually had her sort of silhouetted like this and kind of lighting just this sliver of her, so standing kind of just like I am, but and right about here, and then turn your body back to me a little bit more. Perfect, and then kind of, yeah, looking out the window. And then we're gonna have our amazing makeup artist just kind of doing like a little fake, you know, doing so this. And this I'm actually gonna squeeze back here, you guys, just if you don't mind. So to make this a little bit more real, like what I would do, I'd be like, Lauren, it's time to get in your dress, we're so excited. All right, when you get up in your dress, I want you to stand right here and look at me. So that's what I'll tell her, and what I'll do, is 90% of the time when I'm shooting the bride getting ready in her dress, I'm in a chair and I'm shooting down at her. A lot of those shots that we showed you, I was totally shooting wow, down. So. so what I'm doing is I'm looking for her facial awesomeness. So exactly what she's doing now, you know, like she's excited, she's getting in her dress and she's looking at me and she's like, oh, I'm so happy, this is so fun. <laughs> And then what I'll do is then I'll get wide and you'll see everyone in the room, which will kind of be cool. I'm trying to tell the story of what's going on in these shots. You'll see um, tomorrow when we kind of go through and show you what we're getting. So those are the shots that I'm trying to tell. And then, so sometimes what she'll do is she'll turn into the dark and I'll be like, look towards the light. You're, you know, it looks awesome. And so you're just educating them on what to do because they don't know. They don't know what looks good. So, so Lauren, really quick, if you don't mind, stay just like you were. We're going to do the same thing, but see how my arms are kind of doing this? See if you can kind of do that with both arms, but looking really hard over your right shoulder. And turn your body back to me more, 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 more. Perfect. And then go and doing up the dress. Awesome, just like that. And I'm going to move back. I don't know how much more room I can go. And then looking right out the window, just kind of a saw. Yeah, oh, that's perfect, my dear. Absolutely amazing. Beautiful. Lindsay, you're and doing what I'm amazing. doing, I'm watching my blinkies. She's moved around just a little bit, so I'm making sure that we don't have anything blown out. And then if our camera guy can move just a 
little bit that way. Perfect. I'm just going to grab another detail from this perspective. And then looking way down with your eyes, my dear. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. And drop your right shoulder just a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Just like that. And Jody, scoot back just a scotch, maybe. Sorry, two seconds. So normally when our bride is getting ready, we're, we're letting awesome. it happen a little you bit more my naturally, world just but now. we still want them to look awesome. So we will instruct them as well. So oftentimes, like when they're, when she gets in her dress, like I said, I'll stand up here and I'll get close and I'll get far to show the scene. But then as they're like, um, whether it be a corset back or buttons, and I'll be like, oh, awesome. All right, I'm going to have you turn your back into the light. So then we get to see the details and I have nice light as they're turning. So don't be afraid to like butt in and be like, hey, yeah, go ahead and turn into the light. Hang on, let me make sure this thing is working correctly here. So then we can go ahead and, and turn this way just a little bit, my dear. Yeah, other way. Perfect. Just oh, back just a little <laughs> in between the two. Perfect, right there. Awesome. Fantastic. Nice. Great. And always important to capture those close details. And I know Jody already did it, but we'll just have it for the screen. We'll have her look right up here at me, turn back this way. Actually, looking right down that way. Perfect. And so then what Zach is doing right now, Beautiful. once I have the bride dressed, she looks awesome. awesome. She's ready to go. I'll even get her to put her earrings on Fantastic. just like you where she is. World. Um, Hang on one more. Your mic, babe. Looking way down for me. You see how Zach is affirming her though? He's like, oh, fantastic, looks great. I actually took a couple shots where my exposure was just whacked. So I said, oh my gosh, those are amazing. <laughs> Chin up just a touch, but looking way down. Perfect. So as I was saying, you know, I'll have her right in the situation. She's dressed, she looks great. I'll have her put her earrings on right in front of me. And then like Zach's doing, we'll grab a quick portrait. Like, awesome, look down. And you have no idea that you're standing in this room with underwear and makeup and everything hanging out everywhere. You have no idea and you just get this really nice portrait. So it's a really quick grab when you're already set up for that light. Your camera's already set to shoot. Awesome. Yep. So one more thing we want to do while we're sitting, we have this big huge space that's beautiful. So I think let's get a quick shot of the bride. We've got this beautiful piano back here. So let's get a quick shot of her just kind of chilling right there. I think it'd be amazing. So if we can just move these cords. What I think would be awesome would be is if you were kind of sitting right, let's see. What do you think, babe? I kind of want this yeah. face in this way. Yep. What would she kind of be like? Yeah. Yep. Like this? Work it, babe, work it. <laughs> what do you think of that? You can actually probably sit more like this. And then sitting right to the front of this and then looking right out this window this way. Perfect. So this is what we'll do at weddings. We see something cool, we have really great light, so we'll just take advantage of that. And that's okay because that's your job that you're there to do and, and they love 50. it. Can somebody yeah. hand me my 50 mil and a reflector? Mm -hmm. We may add just a little light just in case we need it. And then we're going to shoot Zegroom. Yeah. Yes. Funny question. Actually, was she closing her eyes in that one? In that shot, or was she just looking at her nose? Looking down. Yeah, we try not to get her to close her eyes, but yeah. it said look way down with her eyes, oh, which looks a lot okay. better on your eyelashes, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so avoid the closing their eyes yeah. and have them just look. I usually say look down towards your look nose. Look down. Okay. Which looks great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this whole time you're using the center point and recomposing. Is that what you're doing? Okay. Uh, no. What I'm was... shooting now at 2.0. Jody was. Okay. I'm not. Okay. So you're using. Because she the... was shooting at 2.8, so she was focusing on the with the center point and recomposing. Yeah. Actually, I was using the upper. Oh, was she was using. Okay. The upper okay. Ones. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I was doing the same thing. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. That looks so, awesome. Something to think about too is when you're setting up a bride, like so, you. Um, I don't know if you could see it, but as soon as Lauren sat down, she started like fixing her dress because obviously, like a bride, like a real bride, especially wants to look good. So um, I think it really makes the bride feel secure, even if there's nothing to tweak, but just like to come up and be like, oh, great, great. And then, you know, just to fluff her dress. I mean, the dress always needs fluffing. I don't know who made That's the idea awesome. of having weddings with big wedding dresses. This way, Remember. But then face way back that way. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Super, super. So just to make sure that you know Hi. that you are. Remember both of our mics are on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm like talking to her. And she, so one at a time. Go um, ahead. So just to let her know that you're watching out for her and you're watching for those details and you want her to make her look good too, that gives her even more confidence. That looks amazing. And can we take this hand and maybe kind of throw it 
Yeah, looks great. And they're looking right out the window. May feel awkward, looks awesome. Feels weird, looks good. We say that all the time. And it's so true. Yeah, that's amazing, my dear. Perfect. So I switched to the 50 just because we were a little bit too close um, with the 85. And let's make sure that these are shooting up to the screen there. And so, you know, we're talking about as you move closer and further away from the window, the light does change. So Zach did change his um, shutter speed. Awesome, yeah, that looks So great. he's not shooting at the same exact camera settings. So now just because we have all this great white on the floor, same thing, my dear, and a little more dramatic, leaning that way, but then looking way out. Yeah, that looks super cool, oh my gosh. Get it, Lauren. Get it, girl. <laughs> nice. Chin down just a touch, looking here. Yes, but a little more towards the window, but looking here. Yes, and then looking way out the window again, but leaning back again. He looks so good doing that. Yep, back to me a little more. Super cool, and then one more looking way out the window. Perfect. Love it. Amazing. So super cool. So then I'll shoot um, just a couple shots really quick of a great example, and we'll show these tomorrow of you know, Zach's shooting some wide shots, but um, what I can do is I can put the 70 to 200 on, and so I can zoom in and I can get my own shots while Zach is shooting that, so we get something totally in more tight without having to like get all up in our grill. So exactly what you were doing for Zach, Lauren. Yep, perfect. And then keep looking out that window, perfect. Awesome. You keep are amazing. Lauren, go ahead and turn your shoulders for me, other way. Yep, and then bring your face back to me a little bit. Yes. Nice. Well, let's do one more with the reflector, but bringing it in real close. And then looking right out the window again, just past me. Perfect. Nice. And then looking right here at me. Amazing. Can we just breathe in through the mouth? Yep, perfect. Super cool. You rock. This is Stacy, our fandy, dandy assistant, by the way. Fandy dandy. <laughs> Super cool. So now that we've got some cool portraits of the bride, and we're kind of crunched for time here, we want to move on to the groomster. So any questions with that while we transition over to El Grumo? Stark Bites from the internet is wondering what metering mode uh, you use most. Do you spot or centered metering? Good question. Yeah, we use average weighted metering most of the time, but we really don't use our meter that often. We just manipulate it with the Expo Disc. Okay and then shoot on manual. So the meter is kind of irrelevant at that point. We just use, and we usually just fill the frame with whatever needs to be correctly metered. Um, most of the time it's that Expo disc is filling that frame. And then it doesn't matter what metering mode you're on. If it was on center, average, uh, evaluative, or any of those. Um, but then if we're in a quick situation and we switch over to AV, and I have to do, the only time we don't shoot on manual is when we do what we call a grab shot. Mm -hmm. We're inside the church, we're set up manually, they go from dark to four times brighter outside. We don't go, hang on a sec, let me do a quick adjustment on my camera, hold that moment while you're just getting married. You know, we don't do that. So instead what we do is we switch to AV really quick and we kind of get what we call grab shots. Um, so then in that case we're on average metering because we just want an average evaluation of that scene. And we probably realize we're gonna have to individually adjust those images as well, which sucks. 